All right, coming up this month, Microsoft's new support feature for the .NET, .NET Assistant upgrade. Uh, Anthropic adds a new prompt evaluation feature to its console and a critical open SSH vulnerability threatens mi millions of Linux systems. I'm Adam Kogan, this is William Leemberg, let's get into it. So let's get on the first piece of news. Now we have done a lot of uh, .NET uh, 4.8 or .NET Framework 4.8 to .NET 8.0 mm. uh, projects. And these are big, hairy projects. They're not easy. Um, and we have an assistant uh, that helps us and there's been yeah. an update to this. Yeah, so there's a, a plugin for Visual Studio. There's a CLI tool even if you're not using Visual Studio. Um, and they're awesome, yeah, it makes, does, does a lot of legwork for you. And uh, you're trying to get one of them, are you? .NET uh, migration. Uh, oh yeah, rules. Yeah. yeah, so we have written a whole bunch of rules on how to get to .NET 8 mm -hmm. and uh, how we do that. But uh, there has been an update to this that makes it even a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. And that is, um, you know, how to get older applications that have uh, different um, uh, namespaces and things like that. So let's take an example of this. Uh, be besides namespaces, types and methods, they're not the same either and therefore you need to make changes. And they've got an example here, the same example Matt will be talking about tonight on Maui, but let's just say you take xamarinforms.color not only do you need to update that namespace from Xamarin Forms to Microsoft Maui.graphics, you also need to yeah. change properties like RGB to red, green, blue, and the static color properties like Alice Blue, for example, to a new yeah, type colors. called Colors. Yeah. So this is a mountain of work. Yep. Uh, everything of, doesn't compile. Lots of refactoring to uh, get right before it actually runs and mm. then you can test it. And mm. then it's you know, a lot of work. So not only does this work with Microsoft libraries now, they're making it so that third party libraries can provide their own mappings mm. to make these migrations easier. Yeah. So the cost of getting from 4.8 to 8.0 is mi miles cheaper now, miles cheaper. really good. Yeah. Yes. Don't you wish you had had this one a year ago? Uh, yep, yep, even two months ago. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, now tell us, uh, what is your experience like getting from 4.8 to 8.0? Oh. I should say 4.8 framework to 8.0. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to do it. Every, not every project's the same, so you have to come up with different strategies. Mm. Uh, we're doing one currently with a data bridging strategy, which is kind of like the strangler pattern for the code, but it's more for the data first. So we've got a Greenfields API to replace a legacy API. But the data we have to do in bits, it's a mountain of data. We can't just move at once and own a whole new schema. So, so I didn't fully get that data bridge. So um, so you have the Strangler fig pattern to move the old code base to a new code base. That's in one, one strategy. Yeah. Right. And then you've got an old data database you moving to a new schema. Yes. So for this particular project, we have a legacy app running. We're hijacking part of the, the app at one bit at a time and running a whole new modern .NET 8 project. But we have to bridge the data back to the old system so that the rest of the, the application can still work. So we have a new schema in Azure, old schema actually in AWS. And so we piecemeal have to move functionality and data backwards and forwards so that the old system can still run along with pieces of the new system. So it's a little bit complicated, more complicated than an in-place upgrade that we normally would do. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. So uh, I might just try it once more. So when the new, when the users use the new system, mm -hmm. goes through their API over some bridge into the old database. Correct. Oh. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Sounds. Uh... <laughs> and then I'll, so the last bit there is, um, bit by bit we will start owning more databases or yes. more schema from the old one. So we're writing less back to the old system, and eventually the old system and the data bridge is going to be taken away. Right. Okay. Sounds uh, scary. Sounds like doing heart surgery in the back of an ambulance. 
Oh, no. It feels like that sometimes, but <laughs> with uh, a lot it's of going really good, actually. Right. The patient's totally alive at the moment. Okay. All right. <laughs> anyway, so that is awesome. Um, and make sure if you're doing a .NET 8 migration, you're aware of that. Yeah. Next piece of news, uh, we have a new uh, update for VS Code. Mm. And one thing I wanted to call out, well, first of all, I'm just going to mention this. Uh, or you can, uh, you've now got an accessibility thing to nice. add yeah. uh, underline links under everything. So see, open a file has an underline. I, I just wish that was like that all the time, but That's I useful. guess, you know, see how these have underlines, these don't, but on this new extension, these would be underlined as well. It's kind of ironic, but yeah, sure. Yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, but I wanted to just, uh, this profiles editor preview. Yeah, fancy, yeah. So uh, do you want to explain this one? No. <laughs> okay. Okay. So um, with your existing profiles, you can customize it uh, as needed before saving it. So uh, this, yeah, you, you might have different ones for different profiles. Normally, it's instant, basically. So now yeah. you can do everything at once and then and then save it. Yeah. yeah. So that might be uh, a, a nice little uh, improvement. There's obviously a lot of improvements. Yeah. So some more yeah. co-pilot stuff, which is really nice. Mm. Yep. Mm. Yeah. I so, try that one. moving on to the next piece of news, uh, Microsoft is, has been announced as a leader in the uh, data science and machine learning. So, if we look Top over right, here, yeah. there you can see Microsoft, uh, one of the leaders, uh, along with uh, Google. So, machine learning, um, and you know, uh, mm. so that that puts them in good stead with um, any of these uh, machine learning type solutions. So there's a, quite a bit of uh, a story here. You can check that out. Uh, next piece of news. Um, I don't know if you remember how Sam Altman was sacked and then we found out that Microsoft were finding out about it at the same time as we were. And we're going, what the hell? Like they're, you know, uh, the major investor and they have no more knowledge than we have. And uh, so I think think straight after that, there was a kerfuffle. Uh, Sam Altman was offered a job at Microsoft and then they said, no, 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 we'll have him back. And then Microsoft made some changes. So yeah. they had a, uh, an observer seat. That's so right, yeah. they were there. So uh, now. Why, uh, why did they give this, give up the seat? Well, uh, they gave up their seat. Uh, and they said that they had confidence in the board that they're running. And OpenAI said, thank you very much for expressing that uh, you have confidence in us. And we, uh, we, you know, they said, given all this, we no longer believe our limited role as an observer is necessary. And yeah, I that's thought, fine. There you go. that's funny. But uh, now don't forget, Apple have become uh, a strategic player in OpenAI. So what they've done instead is OpenAI are holding a stakeholder meeting yeah, big open. and having both of them at the same time yeah, giving true. them that. So that's how they're going to give pro progress updates. Um, uh, Microsoft, uh, there was announced that Microsoft were getting in trouble for a bit of antitrust violation uh, from the EU. Uh, you're getting a lot of trouble from the EU. And, <laughs> uh, and so this might uh, help with that. All right. Now, there was a open SSH vulnerability. Uh, now, I think it was uh, announcing that it was 31% uh, of, of basically internet sites. That's way too many. Yeah, no, it's a scary vulnerability. So I thought I'd call that out. Um, so make sure that you're abreast of it and patching. Okay, or just use Azure and you get sorted out yourself. <laughs> All right, Anthropic, they are a uh, competitor to um, ChatGPT and OpenAPI and... OpenAI. Oh, sorry, o OpenAI, did I say OpenAPI? Um, and they have this console which allows developers to generate, test and evaluate AI prompts. So more and more of it generating prompts for you. Um, and this, uh, if I could just zoom this up, I'll just see if I can. Uh, nope. Just right click on it. That's it. And we'll try to have a bit of a look here. But um, help our company website is down, getting a 500 error when trying to access it. This is costing us sales every minute. 
it's offline need urgent uh, assistance. So what the current situation is, and it will try to generate the right prompt to get the right answer for you. So uh, there's a couple of examples there, but you basically give your help, I'm screwed, you know, help me resolve it. And uh, that's the idea. It will generate the prompt to get your answer for you. Hmm. Now, we like to finish with a little bit of uh, fun. And that is this. Now, I will give it a go at playing it. I've got some bad news. If your cutting edge gaming rig has an Intel inside sticker on it, it might actually have a ticking time bomb inside. When we go CPU shopping, the most important spec is not the clock speed, it's not the number of cores or threads, it's not the transistor count, and not the cache size. The most important thing is actually something we fail to think about, the failure rate. We don't think about this because modern CPUs rarely fail due to manufacturing defects. They're engineered with such a high degree of precision that it makes rocket surgeons look like morons. No matter how good your CPU specs are, it's all completely pointless if the chip is unstable. Well, Intel's 13th and 14th gen chips can allegedly achieve an impressive 100% failure rate in certain contexts. In today's video, we'll look at the overflowing stack of problems facing Intel chips and find out if it's time to hit panic mode. It is July 15th, 2024, and you're watching The Code Report. For decades, Intel has dominated... All right, so uh, as you can see, uh, that is not good news for uh, Intel. Uh, and it's kind of crazy. The, the whole video is quite uh, humorous in, in that uh, these game developers every now and then were seeing failures. And of course, uh, who do you blame when you're having problems? Toys NVIDIA. Card, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Poor NVIDIA were getting in a lot of trouble. And then they said, what the hell? It's not us. Go and call um, uh, Intel. And Intel eventually uh, said that they were having trouble. Now... Uh, there is, uh, I'll just, there's, there is a good post, I think. Um, yeah, so that this was, mm. uh, this was the hairy post that was basically saying Intel is selling uh, defective uh, chips. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, it's crazy. And now let me just show you the, there's a post here. Yeah, so enjoy this. Uh, Intel has a pretty big problem. It is um, uh, a great video on the whole problem and uh, hopefully, uh, but look, it's very, very rare and, but, you know, uh, it's a big learning lesson. I'm not used to having defective chips uh, that degrade over time, but that's uh, essentially what's happening. So uh, there you go. Uh, if I've missed any news, uh, throw it down there in the comments. We always love to learn. Uh, we've got this and lots and lots of videos on SSW TV and, uh, for this month, that's uh, William and I signing out. Cheers.